Welcome back to Sunless Skies. Last episode we did a bunch of things that I've been meaning to do for a while in the Blue Kingdom, including finally going to almost the end of Death's Doorstep, and finding the Industrialist's lost love. And along the way we lost our name and our face and we gotta go reclaim them from the lost and found. It's not literally a lost and found, actually I just have to pay to get, <laughs> to get them back. So that's what I'm gonna do shortly. I was missing the Testaments of the Feather to get them back when I first came out of that place, but I've got them now, so I'm headed in that direction. Also want to do a couple prospects. Um, I also want to switch over to Yoked so that I can visit the, um, the son's daughter. They wouldn't see me when I was ephemera. Um, oh yeah, this is not actually where you drop off the prospects, it's over here at the stone-faced court, but here is where we can become yoked. Does this give me something? A tale of terror. Oh, we have to visit the priest, right? How do I sweep the well? How, how can I be a spider sweeper? Is that gone, actually? Is that not something I can do? Because I thought it was something that stayed. Crap. It doesn't seem like it. Also, I do have to eat another one of the cannibal pies to leave. So that's great. I actually could have done it just out here on the first screen before visiting the Twice Corn Priest. I just looked it over because I can't do it right now. Because I'm ephemera. Hmm. Maybe the stone-faced court, the, I can get the status of anti-deceased and then switch over to ephemera? Let's go try. Let's complete the prospect. Five barrels of unseasoned hours to the white well. Bonus immaculate souls. Literature is a bargain. I'll take that. Seek entry. Submit a Testament of Roses? What is that? Oh, let's just skip to the front of the queue. Mm, let's just ask my litigator to intercede on my behalf. I think I've done this all before, so I'm not going to read it. Wait, did that not work? Your entry permission lasts one month only, says the administrator, stamping a certificate and handing it to you. Oh. Now I can enter the stone-faced court. Ah, I see. Okay, this seems to be new. You follow the ombudsman until your feet hurt. This seems a sufficiently obscure location, he says finally. I'm investigating the graven who run the court. To put matters simply, I doubt their integrity. They claim their judgments are passed down by the watcher who speaks inside their heads. The ombudsman's voice brims with outrage. But I believe the Graven are deciding judgments themselves far beyond their remit. Why has he chosen you to help? This came a little out of nowhere. But bluntly, I'm desperate. I need someone to act on my behalf, but I can't trust anyone in this court. The ombudsman paces back and forth, kicking up clouds of dust. The whole bureaucratic system is implicated, and it's near impossible to find good help when yoked spirits are forbidden from setting foot here, which is all too convenient, isn't it? Anyway, you are not yoked, but the next best thing. A respectable spirit in good standing, just passing through with no ties to the graven. If I can't rely on you, I can't rely on anyone. Okay, how does he expect you to help? The ombudsman almost melts with relief. These are unusual circumstances, mutters the ombudsman. There is a need for... It shudders. Subterfuge. Henceforth, I will meet you in Erd, away from the prying eyes and ears of the graven. He pauses. M metaphorical eyes. Theoretical ears. For now, investigate the jeweled judge. Discover whether she's lying about the watcher, and preferably hear it from her own lips. 
a hypothetical lips. He steps back, brushing dust from his robe self-consciously. If this investigation goes well, I hope to be appointed a servitor of the Blue Kingdom. Rest assured, from that position, I can reward you most handsomely. A servitor of the Blue Kingdom? We've only met one other servitor, or former servitor, that we then changed into a not servitor. Let's get a board report. This is how I receive Testament of Roses, but it costs me a moment of inspiration. And gemstones. I think I have two or three Testament of the Roses, so I don't need that. And I guess I don't want to be declared anti-deceased just yet. That might make it so I can't help that person. Although it sounds like I can help them just so long as I'm not yoked. Mm, let's buy my crew a few rounds at the tavern to reduce terror. I gotta remember that I can do that here and bring more jumbles of undistinguished souls. Because I need terror reduction here. How much does that do? Not much, that's like 5%. Man, this place, huh? Alright, so let's meet the exacting ombudsman. He gave you directions to a coffee house. The ombudsman asked you to meet him at a coffee house in Erd, where masked spirits silently contemplate empty cups and remember what coffee was like. Approach the ombudsman's table. He's twitchy. He's abrupt. He's rude to the waitress. He clearly doesn't enjoy all this skullduggery. I interrogated the jeweled judge for hours, and all I got out of her was a selection of inoffensive anecdotes. The ombudsman shakes his head solemnly. She's a tough nut to crack, that's for sure. But I have a plan. Every few months, the Graven go to a grand ball called the Coria Macaborum? Macaborum? It's rare for outsiders to attend, and they know about my investigation, so there's no way I'll be invited. But if there's anywhere the judge will let her guard down and speak freely, it's there. Report back as soon as you've discovered a clue. The Coria Maca... Macaborum. Where is that grand ball? Ah, let's ask that. How can I obtain an invitation? The Coria Macaborum is usually off-limits to all except the Graven. But the Ombudsman has an idea. He leans in conspiratorially. I happen to know that the Carius official has received an invitation to the Macaborum, but he doesn't plan to attend says the ombudsman. I expect he'll be happy to give it to you. In order to get him to meet you, though, your status must be invisible or anti-deceased. So I suppose that's impossible, he sighs. In which case, you'll need to flatter the judge with a gift of gemstones and hope she sees fit to invite you. Why would that be impossible? I'll, I'll become anti-deceased, sure. I need to do that anyway. I need to change my status somehow so that I can become yoked. Can I just watch the trials? Does that do anything? No. Oh, wait. Oh, right. I can actually, like, potentially intervene in one of these things. Someone's declared a fail dead. Uh, intercede on the failed dead's behalf. 24% chance. Sorry. Ooh, this has, this description I think has changed since the psalmists took over the white well. The psalmists have been waiting behind the judge's throne. They step forward and thrust a black hood over the head of the immortal spirit. Are you questioning our authority over the failed dead? Demand the psalmists. They drag the failed dead away, flinging curses in your direction. Yeah, because the widowers have been replaced by them. Ask to be formally declared anti-deceased. Am I understanding you correctly 
you wish to stop being dead. Despite wearing an expressionless mask, the ombudsman manages to perfectly convey bafflement. Is this some manner of antic, foolery, or jape? He snaps his fingers. Or is it a subterfuge? Are you hoping to use this to get closer to uncovering the secrets of the judge? I suppose in that case I can help. Although I still find the whole idea a little hard to wrap my head around. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just, just do it. To go from ephemera to anti-deceased, you need to prove that you are, as a matter of fact, alive, says the ombudsman. That'll require a word of endorsement from a litigator on your behalf. And coming back from the dead always requires a lot of paperwork, of course, but I can take care of that. You look suddenly uneasy. But that's not all. You'll also need to submit your internal organs for an audit. You'll be granted a death exemption for the duration, of course. Hmm... Provide an endorsement from the nameless spirit. What would you do without them? The spirit sits and writes an endorsement of your character, while apologizing for the fact that you are unfortunately alive. Thank you. You lie on a granite slab while the ombudsman fusses around you, preparing his tools. He lays out saws, scalpels, hammers. Actually, probably best not to look. Hmm, pass or fail, you'll prove you're alive, but the consequences may vary. Hmm. Well, I have to. 24% chance of success. <sighs> Steal my nerves. The ombudsman begins tying leather straps around your ankles and wrists, humming tunelessly. <laughs> okay, that gave me like 20 tear. Well, actually, only 10 tear. It looked like a lot more. <laughs> and I lost one heart permanently. Uh, torment beyond imagining. The ombudsman is kind enough to give you a nip of whiskey and a cord to bite down on. Of course, there's no anesthetic. The pain is an important part of proving you're alive. Ignore the pain. Ignore the pain. Ignore the... The pain makes itself known. It will not be ignored. It will spread through your body like molten iron and turn you in, into its thrashing, shrieking vessel. Great. The ombudsman finishes sewing you back up. You're sore and raw and emptied. You try to lift your limbs but lack the strength. Even your thoughts feel sluggish. Submit my organs. You've managed to provide enough material for an audit. They're sitting in wet, neatly labeled paper bags on a nearby shelf. It's a long, unpleasant week, confined to the ombudsman's office, draped uselessly across a bed, utterly hollow. Your blood has settled uncomfortably below the knees. <laughs> Finally, a knock at the door. Your organs are returned alongside the results of the audit. You are indeed alive. An official inquiry will take place to discover the source of the error. I'll get you on the slab once I'm sure you're all present and correct says the ombudsman, rifling through the damp little parcels. Sometimes things get lost in transit. Ah, uh, I assume you never had an appendix. Ooh, I also gained a testament of salt. Right, that proves that you're dead, right? So, going back into the stone-faced court, this time we have the Carius official taking us in, which is the person that should have the invite. Right? That's who I'm supposed to get it from? That's at least one way that I can do it. I know I can just pour gemstones for the judge, but... Um, ask the official how you can obtain an invitation to the judge's ball. Oh, is this the Carius? Yeah, this is the Carius official. It just doesn't say Carius. He sighs. If he had eyes, he'd be rolling them. Yes, I have an invitation to the Maca Macaborum says the official. No, I'm not going, and no, you can't have it either. I don't know how it works where you're from, but here it's generally frowned upon to pass your unused invitations to oddly insistent strangers. Let's offer to take over his duties for the day. A moment of inspiration. I have four of them. The official leads you to his cramped room in the cellars. The only furnishings are a narrow bed and a desk piled mountainously with paperwork. Sign everything in triplicate, says the official, putting on his hat and coat. 
Except for those that must be signed in quintuplicate or umbilicate or formal correspondence. Don't forget that the beseechment of sorrowful and earnest supplication must be completed underwater. If you misspell anything, melt it all and start again. Good luck. You sit at the desk. You write and write. You can actually feel the life being sapped out of you. When the official returns, he hands you his invite with a chuckle. Half the rules I told you were nonsense, by the by. Not the underwater requirement, though. That was very important. Ah, and it's from inside of here that we can attend the Coria Makaborum. Every few months, at a grand ballroom within the deepest bowels of the court, the skull-headed graven gather for a dance. A waiter offering figs and pomegranates on a silver tray. A band playing drums and pipes. A puppet show in the corner. There's a remarkably pleasant atmosphere, considering you're surrounded by enough skulls to overflow a crypt. The graven are dressed in colorful linen robes and fringed skirts, their ivory polished to a sheen. They whirl and pirouette across the marble dance floor, laughing and chattering and pouring drinks down exposed throats. The jeweled judge is nowhere to be seen. Explore the ballroom in search of the judge. A hundred eyeless faces, a sea of identical grins. You try not to draw attention to yourself as you flit between the graven, searching for a gem-encrusted skull wearing a horned crown. You accidentally interrupt a backgammon game, knocking dice and clay triangles across the floor. You're momentarily distracted by a teetering game of polo where the players sit on other graven's backs instead of horses. They're swinging mallets just a hair from decapitating you as you pass. You apologize as you stumble upon two entwined lovers in the domed gardens outside, furiously clacking their teeth together. <laughs> Just as you're beginning to abandon hope, you spot her, the jeweled judge, sitting in a private booth, surrounded by a cluster of her fellow crowned judges. Ooh, we can do a lot of things now. Seduce the jeweled judge. <laughs> 22% chance of success. Yeah. Um, but thankfully, the way to just kind of go straight in and just eavesdrop, kind of the most straightforward thing, I guess. Well, a straightforward way to complete it without telling on the ombudsman. That I can do just for free. But the most straightforward way uses veils, 90% chance of success. You hover outside the booth. When a guest shoots you a puzzled glance, you pretend to be very interested in nearby fresco. It doesn't take long before the judge's conversation moves on to the ombudsman. By the sounds of it, he's a tried and tested source of complaint. He's got one thing right, slurs the jeweled judge. It's difficult to determine how she manages to slur without lips. The watcher died before any of us were born. The other judges gasp, but she quells them with a stern look. Don't be so timid. We always stood his questioning. There's nothing to worry about. You slip away. You have what you need. Go back outside, meet him at the coffee shop, right? Let's leave this whole place because it's getting kind of laggy. Oh wow, you can do a lot here. Lie to them, lure them to their demise at the bottom of the well. Uh, no. Tell them the truth. The Watcher is dead, his judgments counterfeit. I knew it, declares the ombudsman, leaping to his feet. Rest assured, my vindication only somewhat dampens my outrage. I'm going to travel at once to the Forge of Souls to present my findings. He pulls from his robes a flawless diamond, the size of a horse's heart. Here, it's just a transparent rock containing no souls at all, but I believe it has some kind of symbolic value where you come from. Hopefully it's enough to re re recompense you for your time. Meet the Ombudsman at the Forge of Souls, and a captivating treasure. Back at Wellmouth, let's fulfill my duties as a spider sweeper. I'm expecting to fail this, actually, I can make this a little bit more in my favor. Because I have 10 hearts right now. Let's do 10 iron. So it's 36%, and 
Now it's 46. Wait, from 36 to 46, so each point of iron is giving me one more percent chance of success? Hmm. Nice. I'm assuming that basically just didn't give me as much terror. Hold on, it says I've lost rattled with spiders. Um, I should read this. The white well's edges are a plunging tangle of clumped sorrow spiders, thankfully frozen. Under your boots they crumble. With every step of your descent, shards of spider fall into the abyss. You come across one of the failed dead, limbs outstretched, fingertips warm, uh, wormed into ice cracks. He dabbled in immortality and ended up here for his trouble. You swing towards him, broomstick jabbing and prodding, ignoring his yelps. He slips and falls into the abyss with a final screech. An undignified end for one who fought so hard not to end. For the rest of the day you dislodge more failed dead, in much the same fashion. One whispers a confession in your ear before he plunges. Another desperately summarizes her life, snatching for immortality even now. Alright, we are yoked once again. Arriving at the Forge of Souls now to meet the Ombudsman. Let's also switch out our officers. So let's go back to the no longer felined eccentric, the gentle eccentric. Track down the exacting Ombudsman. You find him in a hushed chamber of the Lyceum, so swamped with paper you can barely open its bronze doors. Enter the office. The Ombudsman has carved a little hollow for himself and his desk inside an avalanche of paperwork. He barely glances up to acknowledge your presence. He has a pen in each hand and he's scrawling furiously across six sheets at once. Of course, this being the Blue Kingdom, not all the paperwork is paper. There are stone tablets, a rune-carved obelisk, a spirit lurking in the corner with a requisition form tattooed across its bared chest. Best not to think where the small print might be found. To enter the room, you have to carefully step over a lazing cat with natural hieroglyph-like markings across its back. Do they breed paperwork here? Hello, nice to see you. The ombudsman talks in the short, clipped tones of someone counting every wasted second. I'm trying to submit the results of our investigation, but for some reason they keep bouncing me between different departments I've never even heard of and sending me more and more forms. It's highly irregular. This goes against everything I believe, but I need you to help me cut through the bureaucracy. You seem good at that. I need... I need two selections of Immaculate Souls. I only have one. Ah, oh, dang it. Alright, leave them to their work. I guess there's nothing else to do here. I guess I can get a poor report inside. I think that's about it. Let's do the prospect. Seven... Wait. No, I... Right, I didn't bring the stuff for this prospect. This is the Bombazine one. The, uh... Death's doorstep is the one that I have the materials for. I think this Lagoy is shooting at me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's shooting at me. I wasn't sure, because I'm also fighting a curator at the same time. Uh, let's take out the curator first. I think it's almost dead. I think it's running away. There you are. Hopefully I can get a terror reduction off of them. good at running away. There you are. Shit. Oh my god, those projectiles hurt a lot when they hit you from the Lagoy. Ugh. Wow. <laughs> Give me a nice little bump. Take a trophy, substantially reduce your tear from 75 down to 50. Ha! Oh, that is fantastic.
There we go. Let's get our surprisingly not great terror reduction. If I remember right. 51. 10 to 41. Just 10%. You get way more from a curator. It's really weird. At death's doorstep now. Let's get my stuff back. Reclaim my face. You tramp through the mud until you find a bureaucratic outpost, half cairn, half bunker. Oh, I thought that would do it right then. And we've actually entered the place, which we've done before. Now let's actually get my face back. The quartermaster slams a stack of wax tablets on the desk. Fill these out, he says. And I'll need a testament of the feather, too. <laughs> Saving face. After peering through your signed and stamped tablets, the quartermaster sighs. Wait here, he says, picking up his voice jar and heading for the door. I'll need to retrieve your face from the Hall of Stoics. He returns hours later, clutching something ragged and slight. He presses it onto your blank visage and it settles like a spider web. The world regains its color. Sounds are sharper. Smells keener. You reach up with both hands and gently, reverently push against your familiar old eyes, nose, lips. No more going into the catafalque unless you don't plan on coming back up, says the quartermaster. It's not healthy. <clears throat> Wait, I can't get my name? Oh, I... That's weird. I thought I needed Testaments of the Feather for both? But I actually need an indulgence, and I don't know... Oh, I need the... I need permission from the son's daughter. Ah, ah, okay. Well, that's fine, because I'm just about to go there. Can I get a poor report here? Trick a monkey's ghost? Wrangle a deceased elephant? Use this as the basis of a report on the demographics of the Blue Kingdom? Um, is this a poor report? Um, I just wandered the streets of the officially nameless town. <clears throat> a crowd of masked spirits passes you. An elephant, a giraffe, two cats, a little boy, and many others. A red string is tied around a limb of each, but a loose end trails from the last creature, a cheetah. A yoked spirit follows behind. It's holding the other, broken end of the string and carrying a goad. Neither is doing it very much good. I guess do this and see if it's a port report? I think it is. Yeah. You copy down the numbers of each creature with notes on their conditions. And the division, as far as you can tell, between male and female creatures, the leopard spirit looks wounded. Might it have come from a circus? Add a paragraph or two of summary and interpretation, and you have a document you might present in the guise of a port report. Alright, that'll do. Let's do the prospect. This is gonna be a huge profit. 2300! And some bonus jumble of souls. I'll take those gladly. Alright, over to the sun's daughter. Shadow of the sun. Port report. Seek an audience with the sun's daughter. Right, they have to ready my form by like taking off my skin or something. Mm, what does this take? Oh, allow the Nameless Spirit to assist. This is a cheaper version of it. Also takes a moment of inspiration. Alright. We've done that before. Plead for an indulgence. 28% chance of success. Hmm. Oh, this is who I hand over the dignity of Albion Bill to. Let's do that last. Request permission for the lost love to leave the Blue Kingdom. 
If she leaves the Blue Kingdom without a special dispensation, the light of the law will unmake her. If a spirit leaves my father's kingdom without my blessing, she will be rendered to salt. I am pleased with this state of affairs. As she states this, pillars of salt spring up around you like a circle of standing stones. Why then should I break centuries of tradition and permit her to leave? To allow such a thing goes against everything my father and I strive for. Offer a costly tithe. Three immaculate souls. And a searing enigma. Okay, um, I could actually just go buy immaculate souls from here. They export them. I actually bought one because I was expecting to use my two for the forge of souls. But, uh, they need three, so I guess I could just go back, buy three, use them here, and then I'll have two left over for the forge. Well, I don't want to waste my time while I'm here. How do I ask for my name back? Oh, right. Plead for an indulgence will be it. Oh, I guess I'll try. 20% chance of success. A single word from the son's daughter can cut through the Blue Kingdom's bureaucracy like a superheated knife. The nameless spirit indicates that it has come before the son's daughter before. His arguments can lend weight to your words. <sighs> no. I'm not listening to the request, because I did it in the past, and I said no, and they kicked me out immediately. Okay, what... What is this? Uh, you've carried proof that London did not kill Albion's son all the way here. To deliver it is treason, but traitors can be well rewarded. Treason to London, right? I'm just making sure that I'm not like... I don't want to be fucking over the wrong person. This is where I'm supposed to deliver it, right? That's where they asked me to. Delivering it to the throne of ours is the stabbing... Basically stabbing the revolutionaries in the back. And helping London. This is the fucking over London helping the revolutionaries. Right? Yeah. Well, there's no real reason to do that right, right, right now. Nah, you know what? Screw it. Hand over the dignity of Albion, Bill. This will make the son's daughter happy. Right? I think? I'm not... Sure. You have carried proof that London did not kill Albion's son all the way here. To deliver this treason, but traitors can be well rewarded. The son's daughter smiles, if a smile can be made of a torrent of incandescent ash. We know. There is an order to creation, a chain of being. Things such as you cannot be the death of things such as we. We will not pursue legal recourse against your empire. You note the flecks of shadow at the heart of her fires. She's concealing something. You suggest that Londoners are inventive. That their facility, especially at warfare, might surprise her. The son's daughter interrupts. You misunderstand. My father and I know unquestionably that London did not kill the king of ours. When a murder is committed correctly, when a murder is committed correctly, only two creatures know what occurred. One is the murdered, the other. She says no more, but opens one of her thousand plumed hands. The thing on her palm blazes with savage flame. A trophy, plucked from the corpse of a star. You have concluded the story. The Blue Kingdom will not intervene against London, but the First Secretary will ensure that the secret that the sun was already dead when London came to the heavens will begin to circulate. Good. You have betrayed Albion to the Blue Kingdom. Good. 
Also, I feel like what they're implying here when they say, My father and I know unquestionably that London did not kill the King of Hours. When a murder is committed correctly, only two creatures know what occurred. One is the murdered, the other, and then I assume the murderer. Are they implying that they are the ones that killed the King of Hours? I think so. I was hoping they might give me a indulgence, but nope. Alright, let's leave. Oh right, that gains me terror. So I can't request an indulgence until enough time has passed. I assume probably two weeks, that's the usual time. So about halfway through the next month, because it's near the end of September. Because of that, I don't think I should actually go over here and uh, get the Immaculate Souls and then come right back here to plead for the ability to uh, get the Industrialist's Lost Love out of here. I don't think I should do that. I think I should wait a couple weeks so that I can do both that and take another pass at trying to get an indulgence at the same time. Because it takes a moment of inspiration every time I do that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to head back to the Forge of Souls now that I have two Immaculate Souls to continue with the... I forgot their name. You know, the, the person. You know what? Before I go back to the Forge of Souls, I feel like exploring the Blue Kingdom a little bit more. I mean, I've certainly discovered everything major, but I want to explore everything. Every little corner. Hmm, let's dream raises my terror. Ah, Langley Hall. Oh! I just pressed F to scout and I can't. Right, my Ratronaut isn't equipped because I don't have the mirrors. It does spawn these notices, though. It's very fun. <laughs> oh, it's actually... Is it pushing me in this direction? Or is that just me? Oh, that was just me. That was just momentum. Yeah, let's explore behind Death's doorstep. Oh, it's one of those lays, uh, lays, rays of light. I forgot what they were called, but they're special. Distort all the color, chromatic aberration. And I think it gave me something? I'm not sure what, though. Oh, Vision of the Heavens, and... Oh, did that reduce terror? I think that reduced terror. It said minus 10. That's super nice. Any terror reduction is basically gold in this place. Okay, where next? Well, let's explore this little spot. This place is so small, there's no excuse not to have it 100% explored, right? Plus, I feel like somebody commented a long, long time ago that every region has its own special ship, like the Behringer and the Parsifal. I might be remembering that wrong, so that might not be true, but I just have in my head that it might be true. And if it is, then man, I want to find him, because I haven't found one for the Blue Kingdom. Or Albion, I think. Oh, you're gonna try to kill me. Yes.
Uh oh. Eater of the dead. Let's not do that. Share visions of the heavens with them? Sure, what does that do? Oh, that reduces terror significantly. The shades sit at your feet. You're surrounded by an arc of porcelain death mask, all tipped, all tipped avidly towards you. When you finish, they rise with a new purpose and turn towards death's door. They've, they're determined to try again. Good for you. I'm fighting the Lugoy. Oh yeah, don't touch him. Please let me get around you. Let me get around you. reduction 31% tear doing pretty well for myself tear wise out here let's go explore this a little bit Okay, looks like that's it. Over to the Forge of Souls. Wait a second. We got a spear for. Yeah, let's get him. Teamwork. Whoops, I should not have shot there. There we go. Yeah, I don't think the blue Lagoy want to kill me. I think we're cool. Mm, scrap the engine. 15 hole back. I'm actually going to see if this little spot here is a, a through way to get to the Forge of Souls. It's very fun. It's like I'm painting the sky with words. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, that's... I can't pass under that. Nope. My brain was saying bridge? 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 Question mark? No, not bridge. Back at the Forge of Souls. Ask the Nameless Spirit to intercede on my behalf. There's only so much they can do. You'll need to pay a tithe as well. Every bureaucrat refers you higher and higher up the chain until you find yourself called to a meeting with the Lamentation of Mists herself. Her wings tremble. The Watcher is dead, she says mournfully. Long gone, decayed. The unworthy scribe whispers in your ear. We allow the Graven to maintain their fiction because the Watcher's status as an omniscient judge means we avoid contending with every court's worst nightmare. Appeals. Appeals would overload our creaking bureaucracy beyond recovery. He pauses. Everyone understands this except the ombudsman, a limited thinker. He must disappear, mutters the scribe spinster, picking fitfully at the tablets scattered around her. You must do it. Hmm. So we wouldn't want anybody to be able to achieve justice because then our absurd bureaucracy would become slightly more absurd. You don't see a problem with that?
warn the ombuds ombudsman that he is in danger. The Lamentation of Mists ask you to make sure that he disappears. Is that so? The exacting ombudsman continues filling out paperwork until your words sink in. He carefully lays down his pen. Then I suppose I'd better flee the kingdom, hadn't I? He gathers his possessions. It doesn't take long. He collects some paperwork to keep him amused on the journey. I've caused you enough trouble, he says wretchedly. I have friends at Sky Barnet. They can help me with this subterfuge business. Just don't tell anyone where I've gone, and thank you for the warning. Safe travels, my friend. He hurries from the office. Return to the Lamentation at the Forge of Souls and tell her that the Ombudsman has been dealt with. Do I have to pay to get in, or are you going to give me just straight in? No, I got to pay to get in, huh? Wait, I can offer a tribute? A ministry approved literature? Heck yeah. Oh, they have a distaste for the classics, apparently. The unassuming scribe sighs sadly. I appreciate the gesture, but we are not in the habit of cataloging your ghastly attempts at profundity. If you wish to restock our Lyceum, I'd suggest searching Eleutheria. The Lamentation is very interested in recovering whatever's left from the libraries scattered about that unhappy kingdom. Ah, uh, that would be scraps of ancient knowledge, but I don't have them. Testament of the Feather, that's fine. Inform the Lamentation of the Ombudsman's disappearance. He was already dead, and now he's gone. Wink, wink. She flaps her great, fragile wings. Waste. Would have made a good servitor if he had only understood. Bureaucracy serves power, not the other way. She plucks a sheath of paper from one of her shelves. Recompense. Maps of the kingdom from ages past. She wrenches a white stone tablet from the ground. A study of the fears of stars. Three unlicensed charts and a searing enigma. Damn. Well, since they haven't kicked me out, I might, I might as well beseech them for a testament of salt. Let's see which test I get. The trial of appetite? Again? Once again, the easy one. Examine. Oh, I didn't mean to do the desserts. Although that probably won't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Distract myself. There we go. Went back to C. Barnet, or is it Sky Barnet? Sky Barnet, and did the usual stuff, repaired, etc., etc. And I also picked up another prospect for the forge, and got all the stuff for the Bombazine one and the new prospect. And now I'm at the forge, so let's turn them in. It's going to be a huge profit. Seven thirsty Bombazine, almost, almost two thousand. Plus a bo bonus moment of inspiration. That's very good. I've been using a lot of those up. Five caged catches. Almost 2,000. Bonus cask Novartine gemstones. Just kill this corn fluke. If I succeed tearing off a trophy, 49% chance of success. Substantial tear reduction. From 34% to... Nice. 4%. Back to the Shadow of the Sun. Port report. Seek an audience with the Sun's daughter. Can use another moment of inspiration to do that, unfortunately. Let's plead for an indulgence. Nah. <sighs> Request permission for the lost love to leave the Blue Kingdom. This time I have the three... Things of Immaculate Souls. Your offer is enough for me to consider your request, but I must impose a limitation. The son's daughter pauses. The spirit in question can only return to her lover for a year and a day. If you fail to bring her back within that time limit, the consequences will be severe. With that final word, she seems to grow in stature. Her eyes become shining hurricanes. 
For a terrible moment she looms over you, huge as a mountain, wide as a sea. Severe beyond measure or reason, and falling solely on your shoulders, traveler. Okay, yeah, great. A year and a day. I'm not going to trust anything to, like, actually write that down somewhere. You know, in a quest log or something, so I'm going to write it down myself. Mm. Let's put it here. Return. Uh, I guess just return the industrialist's lover to the Blue Kingdom by... What's the date? 17th of October, so by the 18th of October... 19... 1912, yes. A year and a day. Well, I guess I might as well get a testament of the feather for uh, in exchange for one sky story. <laughs> Seems fair. Heck yeah, get everything I can while I'm here. New total, three. And goodbye. So, around the end of October, I can attempt to get indulgence again. Damn, getting my name back is really hard. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, frankly, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I've done almost everything there is in the game. <laughs>